the most simple type of sensor is the switch. A switch is a sensor that can only have two states, on or off. There are many different types of switches that you can get which work using different kinds of mechanisms. For example, there are mechanical switches that switch between on and off when they are physically pressed, either by a user or by some physical object in the environment or sometimes by the robot itself. These mechanical switches that I'm showing you here are called bump switches or sometimes lever switches. They typically have three contact points. One of these contact points will be labeled something like common or com or sometimes even just a C. One of the contact points will be labeled NO, which stands for normally open, and the third contact point will be labeled NC for normally closed. Now, suppose you connect the COM or common connection to your control power source, such as VDD of the PSOC, and then connect to the NO, normally open, contact to one digital input pin and the normally closed to another digital input pin. When the switch is not pressed, the normally closed pin will read high and the normally open pin will read low. When the switch is pressed, it will reverse. Normally closed will read low and normally open will read high. The button switches in your kit are a simplified version of this. They have only two pins. One is COM and the other is normally open. Let's take a look at how to effectively read a switch. In your kit, find the male to female jumper wire strip and peel off two of the wires like this. Use the female side to press onto the two terminals on the button switch as I'm showing here. Make sure you press them on all the way so that the casing around the female side of the wires sits flush up against the body of the switch. It should be pressed on all the way as far as you can press it on. Now, plug one end into VDD and plug the other end into pin 1.7. Right now, we have the two servos plugged into pins 1.7 and 1.6. Unplug them for now so that the servos don't move around and we can use those pins for our sensors. Also, VDD is right now plugged into the power rail on your solderless breadboard. So you could plug in one end of this switch to the power rail rather than VDD. It would be the same thing. Now let's create some code. Open PSOC Creator and open the workspace we've been working on. Click on File, New Project. And let's name this project Sensors. In the top design window, Add a digital input pin like this. Now double click on the pin. Name the pin switch underscore one. Also uncheck HW connection. 
Also, there's one more thing we need to change here, and it takes some explaining. If we just wire up the switch as we have it, we will experience some electrical problems because our input pin never gets connected to ground. When we press the button switch, the pin is connected to VDD and it will read high. But when we release the button, the circuit just breaks, it just opens. If we want the pin to read low after we let go of the button, we need it to be that when we let go of the button, the pin is connected to ground so that any remaining electrons on the pin can be drained away. So we could solve this problem by connecting the pin not only to the switch, but also to ground through a relatively high resistance resistor. If we do that, then when the switch is pressed and the circuit is closed, electrons will flow from VDD through our switch and drain into the pin because the pin has less resistance than the resistor. But when the switch is released, any electrons still on the pin will go through the resistor and drain into the ground because the resistor is less resistance than the open switch. In circuits, we refer to this as a pull-down resistor. Now, PSOC actually has the ability to wire up a pull-down resistor inside the chip for us just by selecting it on the pin. So let's do that now. Okay, now in our pins window, let's assign the pin to pin 1.7. Next, let's write some code. I'll start by cleaning up the code and deleting all of these comments. Now, in the for loop, let's put if switch underscore one read equals equals one, and then we'll put some curly brackets here, opening and closing, and then we'll do else and some curly brackets also. Notice that I used two equals signs here. I use two equal signs because we're checking to see whether or not the switch read is equal to one. If I use just one equal sign, that's assigning the value one to switch read. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to make the switch go on. We just want to check whether or not it is on. So this conditional statement that we've created reads the pin called switch and determines if it is equal to one. It should be equal to one when the switch is pressed and therefore a high voltage is applied to the pin. Now we need to do something inside this conditional statement so we can see if it is working. Let's use the LCD screen. Back in the top design, Add an LCD character block to the screen. Now set the pins for the screen to port 2, 0 through 6. We should still have the screen wired up from when we did it in the introduction. In the C code now, we'll add the start LCD screen line like this. Then we'll write the word on to the screen if the switch is on and off if the switch is off.
We also need to add a short 50 millisecond delay inside of the if and the else. Otherwise, the screen will clear and print so fast that it will be difficult to see what's going on. Finally, program the PSOC. Okay, great. We just learned how to wire up and read a mechanical switch. But actually, there are many other kinds of switches also. One common type is called a hall switch. A hall switch is turned on and off, not by physical pressure, but by the presence of a magnetic field. Bump switches and hall switches are both commonly used in homing processes in manufacturing machines. Often, we'll program a manufacturing machine to move in one direction until the switch goes high, then stop and remember the current position as the zero position. If you use a hall switch for this purpose, often you will put the hall switch on one side of the motion and the magnet on the other side of the motion. There's also another common type of switch called a reed switch. A reed switch is very simple. It has a glass capsule with a thin piece of metal inside that is bent. If we would bend the thin piece of metal that is, the reed, forward, it would touch another contact and close the circuit. The reed is made of a ferromagnetic material so that when a magnet comes near to the reed switch, the reed bends toward the magnet and closes the, the circuit. This kind of switch has been pretty common in the past, but it has a number of drawbacks. One is that the reed tends to bounce when it hits the contact, so the switch might go on and off a bunch of times very quickly before it finally closes for good. Also, the little reed can wear out and break over time. So the hall type switches have become more common than the reed switches in newer systems. You actually have some hall switches in your kit. They are incorporated into the sensor in your kit called a Hall Quadrature Encoder. A Hall Quadrature Encoder is a type of digital sensor. In the next video, we'll learn how to read the Hall Quadrature Encoder, and we'll learn about other digital sensors.